All right, welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and, and we're talking about biblical faith. Now I'm going to deviate a little bit from the traditional way that I've taught biblical faith in that I'm going to talk about the uh, doctrine of baptisms. And, and of course, faith is required in this subject as well. And so that's what we want to talk about. Now, I'll come back to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do, God permits. Well, it said doctrine of uh, baptisms, plural. So that means that there's more than one. And so the three baptisms that we're going to deal with is the baptism of regeneration. That's that born-again experience, the baptism of repentance, and the that's the water baptism, and then the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are other baptisms mentioned in the scriptures. One that comes to remind is the baptism of death or the baptism of suffering. And, of course, uh, those are that's entirely a different subject. So we're going to deal with these three that I mentioned. And so then, we uh, look in Psalms chapter 1, and beginning with verse 1, back here in Psalms. Psalms chapter 1, and verse, Psalms 1, verse 1. And here we see, as we read this, two groups of human spirits. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Now the ungodly, see, this, that's another group. There's the godly, and there's the ungodly. Verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So we have the ungodly, and then we have the godly. So the godly are the people who are characterized by righteousness, love, obedience to God's word, and separation from fellowship with the world. The ungodly who represent the ways and counsel of the world, who do not abide in God's word or counsel, who are cynical about God and mockers of that which is holy, and who consequently have no part in the assembly of God's people. Now the lives of those who delight in God and his word have a root system that draws life from God and prospers. The ungodly are like chafe or shaft that is blown away by the winds of God's judgments, and they have no part in God's kingdom and will perish. And the separation between these two kinds of people will exist throughout redemptive history and into eternity. All right, so then we are going to be talking about faith and how it, how it applies to the three baptisms that I already listed. And of course, it is... What, these three baptisms, obviously, are for the godly. 1 John 3, verse 10, talks about the children of God and the children of the devil. And so we, of course, are going to spend time talking about the children of God now and receiving these three baptisms. All right, so the very first thing, uh, there, there is the, the baptism of... Um, uh, the, being born again, the, best, the big word for that is the baptism of regeneration and, um, or being born again, and then the water baptism, and then the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, the, of, of the three, 
before you can talk about any of them, the very first one is you must be born again. You've got to talk about that. And then the next two is water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, those two, you can get baptized in the Holy Spirit and then water baptized later, or you can get water baptized and then baptize the Holy Spirit. It doesn't make any difference what the order is with those two. But in order to experience those two, first of all, you have to be born again. Now, like I said, it's called the baptism of regeneration. And um, I suppose what I should do is probably take you to John, first of all, and here in the Gospel of John, in chapter 3, and coming right up, up here in 2, uh, oh, verse 1 of John 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And then Jesus answered and said to him in verse 3, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him in verse 4, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus entered and said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of the wind, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, I think it's kind of amusing. I was pastoring a small church in uh, Redwood Falls, Minnesota. And uh, one of my men, one of the elders at the church, he went about six miles uh, away from Redwood Falls to a small town, and he ran into a Catholic priest. And <laughs> he shared, you know, you got to be born again. He shared salvation with him. And it was really hilarious because the, the response of the Catholic priest was this, how can I go back into the womb of my mother again? <laughs> so there really are people that are like that. He said, that's exactly what this rabbi said. And he, and he said, Nicodemus said, how can a man be born where, when he is old? How can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Well, this is, was the response of this Catholic priest. All right. So there are people like that. Kind of hilarious. So, so we're talking about being born again. Now, regeneration, or for those who are born again, it comes to those who repent of sin and they turn to God and they put their faith in the Lord Jesus, Christ alone for salvation, since he paid the death penalty for mankind's and my sins through his shed blood. And so it involves a transition from the old life of disobedience, of sin, into a, a new life of living obedience to Jesus Christ. And of course, the familiar passage that many of us, at least I do, use when I'm, in, when I'm leading people to the Lord, I take them to Romans chapter 10. And of course, here it, uh, it reads, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Well, our time is up, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next session. In Jesus' name, amen.